And our second hour begins with my very special guest, live Governor Rick Scott. Welcome back to Bud Hedinger Live. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Bud. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I wonder how you're doing in the final days of the legislative session. The budget has been passed. You said you would veto it if you didn't get the tax cuts you wanted. You got only a fraction of what you wanted. Are you going to veto this budget or not? Well, I'll go through it. Um, but, you know, the things that were important to me are that I wanted, you know, the, uh, the size of government to come down, the cost of government to come down. I want to start the process of uh, phasing out the, uh, the business tax because I know all those things are the key to getting our state back to work. And the biggest issue we have in our state right now is while unemployment has gone from 12% down to 11.1% in the last three months, we have over a million people out of work. And so my whole focus is jobs, jobs, jobs. We've got to get the state back to work. I agree with you on that, but are you going to cast the veto on this or not? You only got $300 million in cuts. You really didn't get much started on the phase down and out of the corporate tax rate. You wanted $1.7 billion in corporate and property tax cuts. You got about 15% of that. Are you going to let this thing go through, or are you going to veto it? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to review it. Just like I, you know, There's lots of bills. Uh, and uh, but look, I'm I'm pleased with where we started on the on the tax cuts. We uh, we started the process of phasing out the business tax. Uh, about almost half of the business owners in the state will not pay any taxes, uh, business taxes anymore. But That's so you're, it sounds like back in the jobs. Here's my problem, Governor, and forgive me, but I only have you for about another five minutes and a lot of ground to cover. Are you inclined at this point to sign off on the budget, even though you didn't get everything you wanted? Well, I'm going to I'm going to go through it, but but you know one thing you, you uh, it's a it's a it's a big document. I'm going to go through it. I'm pleased with where what I know so far with regard to the starting the phase out of the business tax. Um, almost half the business owners not okay. paying taxes. We've got the property tax reductions. The size of the government's coming down, but I'll review it just like I'm going to do every bill. I'm going to review every bill. I'm going to take my time. All right, fair enough. Now, let me ask you on immigration. It looks like they're completely gridlocked in the House and the Senate on this, uh, Governor Scott. Uh, you and a lot of the folks who got elected in the House and the Senate campaigned very tough on illegal immigration. Uh, you wanted an Arizona-type law here. That was almost a centerpiece of your campaign. Now it looks like we're going to have nothing on immigration and to be honest with you from this microphone it looks like your knees buckled and everybody's knees buckled in the leadership in the house and the senate under pressure from the hispanic constituency and also uh... under pressure from business that wants the cheap labor they get from illegals am i right on that well here's the position i've taken all along first uh, the federal government needs to secure borders two we need to have a a federal logical immigration policy with a good work visa program uh, at the same time, if you are in our state illegally and you're doing something you know, wrong, uh, you ought to be asked if you're illegal or not. But we are not going to have any racial profiling, and it's going to be fair. Why couldn't we get a deal done on immigration reform in this state? Why not? Well, we have three days to go, so let's see what happens. There's lots of bills out there. There's, you know, you know, but I'll tell you an interesting mm -hmm. story. There, I think it was by Monday morning there were 62 bills passed. Same time last year, there was our 52 bills passed. Same time last year, there was 73. Last year, 293 bills passed, both passed the House and Senate. There are going to be a lot of things that are going to happen this week. I think there were 50 bills passed on Monday. On Tuesday, I think is probably the same. So there's a lot of change. There's a lot of things happening. So we'll see. We'll see when we finish on Friday. Assuming we finish on Friday. You know, your poll numbers are down. You're being vilified by the Democrats that you're balancing the budget on the backs of the poor and the little guy. How do you react to that withering criticism? Well, look, my job. I, I ran for office because I care about people. I started school in pub, lived in public housing. I know what it's like not to have money. The two keys is we've got to have the opportunity for great education and the opportunity to get a job, a job, job, job. And that everything I've done is let's get the state back to work. I'm not running to be most popular. I'm running to make sure this state is the most likely to succeed. And we are absolutely competing for jobs with 49 other states in a variety of countries. Everything I think about is will, I, will this state get back to work? 
Let me ask you in closing here, um, you killed high-speed rail, and I think it was absolutely the right call. Now we have the feds saying they're ready to enter into a multi-year funding agreement with the state of Florida to build the SunRail commuter rail project through the heart of the Orlando area here. You put a lot of those contracts on hold to examine them. Are you more or less inclined to approve SunRail today based on the news from the federal government? Well, I'm, I'm reviewing the the uh, the cost. I'm talking to people about you know that are supporting it, that are concerned about SunRail. I've locked in the prices that would be associated with SunRail. So I'm reviewing the financial impact, and I'm, I want everybody to understand the financial impact on them because what this money, the money that Florida will be putting up, will come out of the Department of Transportation money that will be spent in Central Florida. So we are making a choice of how we want to spend that money. Do we want to spend that money on expanding uh, our highways? Do we want to expand our bri make sure our bridges are intact? Or do we, is this the thing that's going to uh, make sure that this, the Orlando market is, is the right, uh, right approach, for, approach for, for transporting people? So that's what I'm going through. Uh, I, I hope to get to a decision quickly. I'm, working, I'm talking to people, uh, business leaders, civic leaders, to get everybody's uh, ideas. Let me ask you one more question. Um, you campaigned as a businessman saying, I'm going to run this state as a business. That's a noble experiment. Is that harder to do than you thought, sir? Oh, no, I think, you know, the way I think about running a business, when you run a business, you think of who your customer is, you have a specific goal, and you measure the living daylights out of it. Uh, I'm try <laughs> I'm, I know who my customer is. Uh, I know I have measurement. You look at everything we're putting out, we're putting out measurement, uh, we're putting out goals with measurement. So I think those are the things that are going to turn our state around and get our state back to work, and that's what I'm focused on every day. You like the job? Oh, this is the best job in the world. Governor Rick Scott, thanks for joining us live here. We'll follow your progress here in the closing days of the legislative session. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, bud. Have a great day. Thank you. You as well.